One of the wonders of indie development is that genres that seemed as though they had died out years ago are still kicking furiously. Another wonder is how many of these games are made by small teams or just one person. Such is the case with Remote Life. Designed by one person, this shmup, shoot em up, evokes the late 90s and early 2000s, when side-scrolling shmups were still a viable genre and could captivate the hearts of the masses, just as easily as AAA titles do today. When an attempt to stop an alien mothership heading to Earth ends in disaster, it's up to you as a one-man army in a single surviving spaceship to blast your way into the mothership's depths and end the alien menace before the Earth's days are numbered. Cue a vast alien horde, plenty of bullets, and a serious amount of weaponry to deal with them. If that sounds like a good time to you, then Remote Life is exactly where you should be putting your peepers and itchy trigger fingers on. Surprisingly, Remote Life takes a more detailed approach to the storytelling than what you'd usually get in shmups, with the story told in between level cutscenes, text, and some in-game voiceovers. It's nothing particularly new, but it's a welcome addition all the same. Remote Life evokes the style and setting of Irem's phenomenal R-Type. There's a distinct similarity between the two games. Alien hordes, massive bosses, and a whole lot of biomechanical designs, and an intriguing combat system that helps the game stand out from the crowd. You see, in Remote Life, your ship's weapon systems have a 360 degree field of rotation, making the game a twin-stick shooter as well. Regardless of what weapon you're rolling with, you can blast away in all directions at whatever is trying to kill you. And you'll need all that versatility, because Remote Life throws everything at you, from every imaginable direction. The screen is often filled with environmental hazards, enemies and projectiles galore, all heading towards you. So it's a good thing you can rotate that cannon and fire out an endless stream of proton death. Remote Life isn't stingy with its armaments either. Scattered across the level are plenty of weapon pickups that replace your standard selection of three infinite ammo weapons. The pickups do have a limited amount of ammo, but they deal massive screen clearing damage when utilized correctly. There's never a need not to use them or conserve ammo, because they're plentiful, but you do need to learn what each weapon does to make sure a new pickup doesn't replace a far more valuable one. Along with these weapons, you can also pick up external turrets for a limited time that also fire in all directions. Alas, they don't last long. The other major pickup you'll want to hunt for are extra lives, as Remote Life has a one-hit kill system, just for you. Each level begins with a limited number of lives, dictated by the difficulty setting you're playing on, so finding an extra heart is a godsend. There's nothing quite as frustrating as making it to a boss, only to exhaust your last heart and have to restart the level. Remote life is, you see, seriously challenging. There are no save points mid-level, so every time you exhaust your lives, you have to restart. If you have extra lives at least, you'll be respawned right back where you blew up. This difficulty, and this game is seriously challenging even on easy, is due to both the level design and enemy placement. The levels are littered with environmental hazards to watch out for, along with twisted claustrophobic level design. Empty space is a luxury, so while well, you have to watch out for closing walls that force you forward, rotating obstacles sliding along the screen, or platforms dividing the player into two, the enemies have no such problems. They and their projectiles can slide easily through obstacles, while you have to maneuver like a madman in a Pac-Man championship match. It's not all completely in their favor, however. Most enemy projectiles can be destroyed, which is wonderful as, sometimes, there's simply no room to dodge. Faster ships are unlocked as you progress, but if you're not careful, that speed can just help you meet a wall faster than an enemy bullet. Visually, Remote Life is rather stunning. The visuals are crisp, clean, and wonderfully animated, with a surprising amount of depth and design added to the game's bosses. Backgrounds pulse in and out of view, while the biomechanical alien and environment designs are all fantastic. The game sports some gorgeous particle effects and explosions, with beam weaponry really lighting up the screen. If you're a purist or want a more retro feel, you can jump into the video options to turn off some or all of the effects, and even apply 8-bit or arcade filters. Again, it's hard to believe at times this all comes from one person. So, all things considered, Remote Life may not be breaking any new ground in the shmup genre, but then it doesn't need to. With gorgeous visuals, an entertaining, though derivative story, and solid and challenging gameplay, Remote Life is a worthy addition to any shmup's fan's library.